Previously on Master Chef. Welcome to the United States of America. Home cooks from four regions across the nation began the battle to become America's next Master Chef. First up, the Northeast. Please welcome Daphne Oz. The Northeast is a melting pot. It's apron time, baby. It's apron time. It's another level this year. I just don't think you're ready for Master Chef. It's a no for me. It was so delicious. I love the layering of flavors. <laughs> you're cooking instinctually and with honesty. That's a yes. I need to tell you a little bit of bad news. Okay. You're not going to see him for a few months. Tonight, welcome back, everybody, to the United States of America. The region convened tonight is the Midwest. And we have another guest judge, Graham Elliott. Do not let the Midwest down. The regional audition rounds continue. Pound it out, baby. If this dish doesn't earn me an apron, I'm not sure I understand what you're looking for, our master chef. As the Midwest cooks compete. That looks like home. For a coveted white apron. It's symbolic of the Midwest and the heartland. The passion's there. I can taste that passion. This dish is a wow dish. The sauce just tastes so bland. Fingers crossed it tastes better than it looks. It's gonna be fun. Woo! I'm sweating. You are walking away with one of those aprons, okay? okay? I hope the Midwest is going today. I'm ready to show off my skills. My dad's the best cook here and he's gonna get an apron today. Yeah! Represent, you gotta represent. Whoa, 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 whoa! Welcome back, everybody, to the season 13 auditions. So far, we've seen some talented home cooks from the Northeast. Yeah. We've already given out five aprons. That means there's 15 left. Tonight, the best home cooks from another region will show us their skills. Only a select few of you will earn a MasterChef apron and stay in the running to earn the title, the trophy. Woo! and the awesome grand prize of a quarter of a million dollars. So, the region convened tonight is truly the heart of American cuisine. There you'll find fresh corn, delicious squash, and enough casseroles to fill any table at potluck, <laughs> right? That region is the Midwest. And we have yet another guest judge joining us tonight. He's an absolute expert in Midwestern flavors and food. Yay! He has received two Michelin stars and is one of the original members of the MasterChef family. Please welcome the amazing Graham Elliott. I've watched this man for half of my life, almost, on MasterChef. And I've always wanted to go to his restaurant. It's only four hours away, but it's really hard to get into. And so for him to be here, it's exciting, and it makes me want to try that much harder to impress him. Welcome back, buddy. Good Thank to see you. Thank you so much. Now you've become such a phenomenon from the Midwest, but in your mind, what's so special about the ingredients from the Midwest? I mean, we call it the Midwest, right? You're in the heartland. You are working with ingredients that are grown right around you. And for me, it's about bringing it back down to basics and sure. making tasty food with that. You've been here before, you've pushed them to the extreme, but what do you want to personally see tonight? I want you guys to stand out, but still stay true to you, your family, your story, and especially that Midwest region. We got you, we got you. Right, all of you, you have 45 minutes tonight to cook your signature dishes. And don't forget, if you want to earn one of the Midwest aprons, three of us need to say yes to you and your food. Last words of advice, do not let the Midwest down. Oh no! All right. The very best of luck to you all. See you shortly. Woo! 
how excited are we to have Graham Elliott back? Yes. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel excited. You know, this is great. The Midwest isn't just flyover country. There is a lot of different cultures there. It's not just steak and potatoes. Yeah, and I feel like the food from the Midwest is misunderstood. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of history. Mm. Yeah. in the MasterChef kitchen, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty damn cool, huh? My name's Grant. I'm 32 years old from Altoona, Iowa. That looks fabulous, buddy. Love it, love it. My love and my passion for cooking comes from one of the darkest moments in my entire life. I was going through a divorce at the time and I, I couldn't sleep. I was two, three, four in the morning just tossing and turning in that bed. You know, I finally turned on my phone and just watched videos all night of different chefs, specifically Gordon Ramsay. I would pick one of the videos that I watched. The next day, I'd, I'd go downstairs and I'd make it. Cooking is what kept me sane and kept me putting Grady, my son, at the forefront of everything. For my sous chef. I'm here to show my son that if we work hard and if we put our minds to something, we can do big things. Whoa! Put your head down, learn, listen, and this is what can come from it. All right, buddy, let's go out. Me and you. What up, what up? Hey! Hey there, big fella. Hi. How we doing? Good. What are you cooking for us? Today? I'm going to do a roasted sweet corn agnolotti, and I have a lemon chai butter sauce with that. You know, agnolotti is not an easy thing. It's a certain kind of a ravioli. There's a lot of technique. You have fresh pasta sitting, which looks good. Pasta has the right texture. The water has to be salted. There's a lot of variables here. Absolutely. The corn in the agnolotti, is it in the filling or outside? It is going to be in the filling. Uh, what so else is right in now, the filling? Right now, I just have the roasted corn, a little bit salt, pepper, and smoked paprika. This looks really good to me. Yeah, I, I agree. It. And this lady is who? This is my mother, Laura. Hi, Mom. Very Are nice you proud of you. your son? More than I could ever tell you. Aww. He's very humble. Humble. He's very giving. Giving. He's very dedicated. OK, so he can be a priest. Is he a good cook, though? <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck, senor. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. you. Nice, nice, nice. That's beautiful. Nice. Come on, Grant. It looks really good. <laughs> there you go, lemon butter, lemon butter. Just under three. Oh, she's pretty. Gorgeous. I think it's finally sinking in now that Gordon's gonna be putting a fork in my agnolotti and I hope he doesn't say my food's crap. Welcome. But look at me, I'm a big old boy, I'm corn fed, I'm from Iowa. If I mess up a corn dish, I don't know if I can go back home. My name is Grant, I'm from Altoona, Iowa. Today I've presented for you a roasted sweet corn agnolotti with lemon butter and chive. Corn is a quintessential Iowa product. So what I want to do today is really recreate what it was like to be in my mom's backyard, shucking corn. She'd throw it in the boiling water. We'd take it out, slather it in butter and salt. So today, I just want to elevate that a bit for you. And what's the personal dream? Because obviously, you've set your sights on an apron. The dream for this is to be able to open my own farm-to-table style restaurant right in my hometown of Altoona. Shall we? Yeah. Yes. Wow, OK, so visually, I mean, this thing's got finesse. I love the shape of the agnolotti. I love the caramelized corn. Uh, it looks beautiful. I love it. It's definitely got Iowa written all over it. Shall we? I love the knife work on the chives. Thank you It's always the much. first thing I'm looking at. Knife work is something I'm very proud of. Tasting like acidity. Is it lemon? Absolutely. So I juice or rind? Just lemon juice uh, cooked Where? down with that butter. With the butter. With the butter, absolutely. Okay. This is wrong. Because you broke the butter with the acid. So incorporating lemon the right way is take a microplaner, very lightly dust the outside when the pasta is already cooked, because okay. any acidity is gonna take your fat and break it. Sure. This just puts me in a tough spot because I'm a, I'm a stickler for like the techniques of cooking and someone who's going to break a butter sauce in a pasta dish because they didn't know or care is a very, very big technical error for me. I'm going to have to say no. Well, hey, I'm here to learn just as much as present to you, so I appreciate that, Joe. Look, there's so much beautiful work done here, Grant. I love the contrast of the filling versus the corn this little pool of sauce that broke. I don't think it's that egregious, to be honest. I think you've done such superior work with other elements here that it's compelling me to give you a yes. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. 
And listen, the Anulotti are packed, uh, which is lovely. So it's non-porous, nothing seeped through, and that burst of flavour is there. Um, technically, it's beautiful. And so, for me, it's an absolute resounding yes. So we have two yeses, one no. I guess it all comes down to Graham. It's great flavor. It's symbolic of the Midwest and the heartland. At the same time, it is hard to kind of look past the fact that there's only a couple things going on on the plate. One of them, the technique of making that sauce was completely went pear-shaped. That's fixable. Yeah. These aprons are uh, so hard to come by. I'm absolutely teachable, and we're taking a chance on Graham. down to Graham. It's great flavor. It's symbolic of the Midwest. And at the same time, it is hard to kind of look past the fact that there's only a couple things going on on the plate. These aprons are uh, so hard to come by. I'm absolutely teachable. And we're taking a chance on Graham. I'm a yes. Oof. <laughs> I think you got this. Thank you all. Congratulations. Well done. Uh, Thank you so Good job. Let's go! <laughs> Having my wife and my mother here supporting, they are the two strongest women that I've ever met. We did it! He deserves this moment, and he's worked so hard for it. So we're going to miss him, but you need to stay here for a really long time. <laughs> Great start. I'm so proud of the Midwest right now. Midwest Stop it. is bringing it. Oh, wow. man. All right. I love you. I feel like people from the Midwest bring a lot of heart, and I think this dish will earn me an apron. It's very hometown. My name is Sarah. I am 32 years old from Springfield, Missouri. I've been a stay-at-home mom for about five years. I'm married to Jordan, and we have a son, Warner, who's five and a half. My son and my husband are my biggest encouragers when it comes to cooking. This is pretty insane. <laughs> they critique my food on a nightly basis, so I think anything Gordon throws at me is gonna be easy, you know? <laughs> you think one more garlic? Yeah. Hi there. Hi. I'm Sarah Prime. Nice, nice to, to see, see you. you. Hey, how are you? Nice, nice to meet you. you. I saw your eyes light up when the original OG walked through the door. I know, in the I'm excited. Well, Midwest, I feel like you'll get... So I'm making Springfield-style cashew chicken and fried rice. Okay, oh. Springfield. I, I know Springfield chicken. Yeah. It's a classic. When you think of the Midwest, a lot of people are thinking casseroles, you know, yeah. potlucks, those kind Which of foods. Which we also... But to be able to get inspired and say, I'm going to do something Chinese, kind of, you yeah. know, it was brought over in the 60s and, and okay, it's so become you know a staple. Story. Of yeah. course. So for you to, to come in and do that, I think it's really eye-opening for the rest of the country and the rest of the cooks. Sure. How are you cooking that chicken? So I am going to double bread it, fry it, and then cover it in the gravy. The sauce is crucial here, right? Because you need yes. the acidity. What's the base of this? Where are we so going? we got chicken broth, oyster sauce, soy sauce, um, some different spices, a lot of ginger. I'm a big ginger fan. Mm, likewise. OK, I was like, I hope you are, too. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, yes. Uh, nice course. to meet you. Awesome. Excellent. Coming from Springfield, Missouri, it's like we don't have any Michelin star restaurants, so I would love to learn those skills. My style is more rustic in general, but I feel good about it because that's very me on a plate. So I hope they feel that when they taste it. Three, two, one. Woo! The judge I'm looking to impress the most is definitely Graham Elliott. How are you? Hi. I see a lot of the dishes he makes, so I think it's going to be a hit for him. <laughs> How are y'all doing? Doing amazing. I made Springfield style cashew chicken and fried rice with a brown gravy. Does it taste like Chinese food? It's kind of a fusion dish on fried chicken and gravy. So it's kind of a mix. I mean, I use soy sauce, I use ginger. There's like green onion. Let's check it out. All right. Who goes first? <laughs> Visually, you know, the color on the fry is nice. The Fried rice, there's not a lot you can do to really beautify <laughs> yeah. it. This is one of those that, you know, again, hopefully 
what it might lack in visual yeah. excitement, the flavor can come through. <laughs> And what kind of oil do you fry the rice in? Sesame oil and butter. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Just love watching you. I mean, it's just so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the fried rice has an awesome flavor. I really enjoy it. It's interesting. I make fried rice a ton, and I've never done butter in it. So oh, it really? gives it almost yeah. uh, like a different texture than I'm used to. But what I think is awesome is that the chicken itself is not oily and greasy and it, it's still crispy. It's a good interpretation of a classic Midwestern Springfield dish. And I want to see what else you have. So I'm a yes. Oh my gosh, thank you very much. I agree with Chef Graham. The rice is well seasoned. Uh, I'm still trying to put my head around this sauce. I feel like it could have benefited from more soy sauce. Okay. But based on the rice yeah. and the cooking of the chicken, that gives me enough confidence to say a yes. Thank you. That's two yeses Thank you very much. with yeah. two more judges still to go. Gordon? <laughs> yeah, the sauce just tastes so bland. What have you got in there? Is it cornstarch? Cornstarch. Oh, yeah, I do cornstarch to thicken it up. Yeah. But there's, there's, there's no acidity, there's no heat, there's no glaze, there's no soy. So it's just, it's like bland chicken stock with uh, cornstarch. The one where I've got is underneath this chicken seems to be a pool of sauce that for every ounce of chicken that you've tried to get nice and crispy, it's gone really soggy. So it, it, oh God, I, uh, I'm not a big fan of this, unfortunately. Okay. Um, Simon, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Joe. So it's up to you, big timer. Shoot that dish down. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Seriously? Come on! And the, the you didn't love it? I love butter. it. The sauce is dreadful. The sauce dreadful is Dreadful is not a word that applies to this dish. Oh, please, Joe. I love the Midwest a lot. You know, born and raised in Detroit. I keep Detroit on my back. Avocados. The food scene in Detroit, contrary to what anybody would tell you, is absolutely amazing. Detroit is a cultural hub. People come to work in the factories and they bring that culture with them. We have Mexican town and there's a huge Muslim population in Michigan. We have so much culture and so much diversity. There's a lot of people's heritage in the food that comes out of the Midwest. So I'm representing that with this dish today. We good, Kev? Oh, we good, baby, we good. Yeah. Tortilla time. Tortilla time. Uh-oh, here we go, Kev. Here they come. Good. Yeah. Holy crap. Thanks, Kevin. You've got your entourage, Yeah, listen, man. this is my team right here. This I is why I'm here. Oh, boy. What are you cooking? Fried cauliflower taco and avocado crema, uh, fire roasted tomato romesco sauce, wow. and a fresh tortilla. What's this dish saying about you? This dish is like kind of like Detroit on a plate, right? Gotcha. Detroit is a cultural mixing place. And, you know, my grandmother over there, she's vegan, but when she was vegetarian, I came up with this dish so she didn't miss out on those taco nights with us. Love that. So <laughs> you're putting cauliflower in a taco yes, to Aron Sanchez. Yes. The taco king. Yes, which is why I'm making my own tortilla, first of all. FYI. <laughs> if you're going to put cauliflower in a taco, make sure it's the best taco ever tasted. I sure Will. Excellent. Love Dude, it. No? Yeah. I'm in trouble with my dough. What's wrong with it? Put too much water. You got 19 minutes. I'm gonna start over. When you make a homemade tortilla, you have to have the right ingredients and everything has to be in the right ratio. That's better. Come on, okay. That's better already. Okay. Just like baking the cake, only you were rolling it out and it has to be thin enough, but not too thin where things just fall off the bottom. You got 345. Check those cauliflower. Look at that. Woo! Let's get some noise over here. Five, four, three, two, one. 
This dish will make not only the Midwest proud, but it'll make Detroit proud because there's love on the plate. And as long as the judges are willing to be loved, this food will give me an apron. Today I've made for you fried cauliflower tacos with a fresh tortilla, an avocado crema, and a fire roasted romesco sauce. And what's the day job? I've been an insurance clerk for almost three years now. I've been in insurance for almost 10, and it's you know time to pivot out. You know I'm turning 30 soon, and I gotta find a new direction. You still look 20, young man. I love that. Well, should we get it? Those tacos. Let's go. Take a yeah. Let's go. Aron, this is in your wheelhouse. I'm gonna start with you. Visually, what do you think? The tortilla's shape is very interesting. It looks more like a flatbread than a tortilla. How did you manipulate those? I just wanted to make them kind of rustic, you know? I didn't want to give them that perfect shape. I wanted you to feel like, you know, this is what you're getting at home. Right, should we dig in? Let's give it a try. What's the spice and the dredge and the cauliflower? What'd you put in there? Put a little cumin in there, some smoked paprika, some cayenne, and some chili powder. I love the adobo and the avocado crema. Unfortunately, the size of the cauliflower itself, I wish that they were a little smaller. That way that there's more service here, they, you know, get crispier. But I do like the flavor. Unfortunately, the competition's so hard right now, I'm gonna have to be a no. Okay, I can respect that. I think you, you're really good at making flavors because the salsas are delicious, but I really am disappointed with the manufacturing of the tortillas. My mom had a restaurant for 30 years. We had one lady that made the tortillas. It's that important. I understand. And that tortilla, sadly, is taken away from all the other good stuff you did. So unfortunately, it's a no. I'm sorry. Come back next year, will you please? Okay, I will. Because the energy is infectious and your attitude is absolutely spot on. Thank you. And more importantly, the passion's there. I can taste that passion. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I probably picked the wrong dish, so I plan on coming back next year stronger and better, and then I'll be able to give them the right dish, and I'm gonna get me an apron. I feel awesome representing the Midwest because I am a proud Cambodian American. Oh, wait. Let's go, sister. Get them potatoes on. So I'm Yonita, and I'm really proud to be here representing the Midwest. I really know what I'm doing. This is not a fling. The Midwest is the best region because that's where the heart is. You won't get better food anywhere else because we make our food with love. Let's go, Midwest. My name is Charles, and I'm from Columbus, Ohio. So I'm here stylist, but cooking is what I love to do. I am a Cambodian American child, and I'm here to represent my mom and dad and our culture as well. Growing up, I watched my mom cook, and I just copied her recipes, and every week I would ask her, hey, does this taste right? And she would be like, I don't like it, do again. When she likes it, she won't say nothing to me, but I take that as a compliment. Mom and dad's not here right now due to some health conditions, but that's okay. They're cheering for me from afar, and it's, they're right here. Home. Home. Come on, pasta. Is this pressure or what? Smelling good, looking good, feeling good. You got this. Just clean it up. That looks like home. I mean, look at that. Come on, Omaha. Welcome. Hello, welcome. I am Yonita, and today I made pomade pasta with fresh tomato sauce. Um, okay, uh, visually, look, it looks simple. There's no protein, just tomato nope. sauce and handmade pasta. Handmade pasta. Fingers crossed it tastes better than it looks. You're going with the less is more approach, and because of that, everything that you do have has to pop. For it being so simple, there's a lot going on that's sadly wrong. Okay. Uh, it's a gallant effort, thank you. Thanks Best so wishes. Much, guys. I right, appreciate thank it. you. My name is Markeela. I have my heart and my home on a plate. I have a beautiful filet mignon, silky potatoes, asparagus, and a creamy peppercorn sauce. Shall we? Sorry. You're gonna break your teeth with these things. It's dangerous. 
Uh, listen, um, the big issue, uh, navigating your way around those whole peppercorns. Yeah. When you make a peppercorn sauce, the secret there is to lightly crush them prior. That way it opens up those aromas and it really becomes a proper peppercorn sauce. I cannot overlook what I consider to be egregious mistakes in how you put a place together. So we can't give you an apron right now. Sorry. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you guys Bye. so much. It's Thanks. been an honor. Thank I appreciate you. you. I hate to see people like her go mm -hmm. on, a, on a technical mistake. But yeah, but that's what's hard when you only have so many aprons. Cooking right? is technical. I think this dish is going to earn me an apron because it's very colorful, it's vibrant, it represents my culture, my family. Welcome. I'm Charles, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and I made my family's recipe a mok, which is a Cambodian style fish curry. And it is filled with catfish, lemongrass curry, chilies, and kefir lime leaf. A mok, a mok. Awesome. Yeah. So what do you do for a living outside of cooking? I am a hairstylist, but I, I'm here today to change that. If this show is flipped around, like what would you be doing to us? Gordon, I like your hair, so I keep the color the way it is. Thank you. But I would tone it a little bit. Right. And what about so, the gray bits at the side? The gray, it's fine. You sure? Everybody loves a silver fox, so. <laughs> <laughs> you have any, any advice Joe, for me? Joe, you would be my easiest client. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I want to taste your food. Huh? Visually, it looks beautiful. I love the little package that you did. You got the little uh, toothpicks to kind of hold it all together. Mom always taught me to build a bowl if yeah. you don't have one. I just got back from Cambodia. I had fantastic food when I was yeah. there. This dish is a wow dish. It's something you would see in a restaurant and you'd be like, <sighs> yes, I want one of those. Mm. Thank you, Chef. Great, shall we? Mm -hmm. uh, so the fish is what? Catfish. Catfish. Why catfish? Why not a saltwater fish? It has fat in it and I feel like the taste is already there. Ooh, it's awesome. You like that heat? <laughs> I'm sorry, we're Cambodian. We like spice. Holy smoke. Oh, it's not that bad, is no, it? No, it's not. It's, it's hot. beautiful. It's great. Arun, what do you think? Here's the deal. I feel like we've all just got back from Southeast Asia. I just got back myself from Thailand and Vietnam and these flavors. It's fresh in my mind. The curry paste is fermented, which is something so uniquely Cambodian. So it's a yes for me. Thank you so much, Chef. For me, it's really a, a flavor explosion. The heat, the aroma that comes from those kefir lime leaves, and especially the catfish itself, which, you know, it's nice and it's rich. Yeah, I love this dish. I'm a yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Gordon, what do you think? <sighs> it's a... It's, it's a no. Two yeses. One more yes, you've got an apron. Gordon, what do you think? It's a... It's, it's a no to letting you tone my hair and a yes to giving you an apron. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank Authentic, so delicious, great job. Thank you, Chef. I thought it was fantastic. It's a yes for me as well. Thank you so much. Yeah. Come on, big man. Well done. Uh, great job. What a nod to Cambodia and a cuisine that doesn't get the glory it deserves. Doesn't. And mm -hmm. Congratulations. Take care. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Good job! Yeah, brother! I know my family's not here with me right now, but I know they are proud of me, and I cannot wait to share the news. Thank you all so much. All right, guys, we gave out three aprons, two left. Having been here from episode one mm -hmm. to now, a decade later, the caliber of contestant and home cook is amazing. We're living in the era of the foodie, yeah. and it's really evident with their ability. Absolutely. Those are funny looking carrots. Those are not <laughs> carrots, Mom. I know. Those are some beautiful parsnips. I'm making a venison filet. 
and I'm here on MasterChef for two reasons. Number one, I'm here to win. And number two, I'm here to show that like people my age, 51, I know I don't look it, but uh, <laughs> that you know we can have a second act in life and I'm ready to do mine. I'm Wayne, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and I am a very passionate, competitive guy. You know, you're either gonna love me or hate me, I think. Bullseye. Uh, but I put 100% into everything I do. I own a media and publishing company. And uh, being a successful business guy, I think when people look at me, they see maybe the suit, uh, nah, he can't cook. But when they taste my food, it's lights out. That's why I'm here, because I think I can cook anything and I can win this. Good pace. Yeah, you're looking good. I've done this dish many, many times. Hello. How you doing, senor? Great, how are you? I'm doing well. You. Hi, how I like are you? Suit. I like Thank suit. you. Thank you. You look like an accomplished man. Why Master Chef? Why now? I've loved food for uh, decades now. Slowly, I thought my skills got a little bit better, and I kind of want to trade in the suit for a white jacket. Really? Oh, you would do it at this point yes. in life? Yes. My food dream is to open up bougie bed and breakfasts in many places. I don't know, maybe partner with you guys. We'll see. You know. Well, no, no. We first got to taste your food. <laughs> Car before the horse and all that. One <laughs> step at a time. <laughs> You seem calm. What's going I'm calm. on over there? Yeah. I'm calm. How much time do I have? 6.24. That's delicious. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. There you go. That looks fantastic. Make that plate look pretty. Come on. Come on. Come on. We got to bring it home to Ohio. Let's go. Five, four, three, two. I feel I executed the dish pretty close to how I wanted to. Let's go, As a businessman, I've been in some pretty tough meetings, but when the judges taste my food, they're not gonna say a word. They're just gonna hand me an apron. My name's Wayne, uh, 51 from Columbus, and I've prepared for you today a venison filet with a blackberry and port wine reduction, parsnip puree, curried carrots, and some mushrooms of the forest. Believe it or not, I know I don't look like a hunter, uh, but I got into it a couple years ago, and uh, I just love being able to harvest it. I learned how to butcher it, take it from the tip to the tail. So this is my favorite cut, the back strap. What's the day job? Because you sound incredibly passionate about food. I do own a media company. Okay. Um, so we publish magazines and websites and, and events, and you know we've been writing about restaurants for years. So I've been kind of on the outside looking in on the food business for so long. And at 51, I'm kind of ready for my second act in life. And uh, I want it to be in food. Excellent. Shall we take a look? Yeah, sure. let's do it. Uh, visually, it looks good. Very good. I'm glad the venison's rested. Uh, nice even sear on that, because you can see that beautiful pink circumference, which is nice. Uh, I wouldn't dredge it in the sauce the way you did. When you cook something perfect like that, show it off. Yeah. Shall we? Go ahead. Sure. Uh, what was the spice mix on the outside, Wayne? Espresso, chipotle powder, cumin, salt, pepper. And what did you cook the uh, puree in? The puree had uh, bay leaf and garlic. I think that the cook on the venison and the rub and the seasoning is very, very, very good. Um, the only comment is the puree is totally under seasoned. It's just fat. It's kind of annoying, and it really brings the dish down. What scores high marks with me is the cooking of the venison. You didn't scorch the spices on the outside, which is very easy to do. The mushrooms are cooked well. I mean, look, this is a very standard dish you would find in a high-end restaurant. So I'm going to say yes. I got to say, I agree totally. It's a yes for me as well. The dish as a whole, it's beautiful. It is that walk in the woods, like we're out hunting for it and found it. I love the sauce and that, that acidity, but sweetness that comes from the port. The carrots were cooked beautifully. They just looked big and clunky and I thought they were gonna be under, but they've got a great spice to it. You definitely know how to cook and you know how to season. So I'm a yes. Congratulations, Wayne. Thank you, Chef. I'm just curious, Gordon, is it a yes for you? Would it be a yes? It's a definite yes, without a doubt. Oh, my God. Yeah, listen, I think what you've proven so far is that you're meticulous. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. More of that, please. A highlight from the Midwest. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. Thank great you. stuff. Yeah, that yeah. Was yeah. Thank Impressive. You. Thank, yep. you. Thank you. Don't let this go to your head, bro. <laughs> Thank you. Take it and run. Well done. Good job. officially trading in my suit for this white apron. Put it on, put it on, put it on! I mean, getting four yeses from that panel of judges really just makes me want to go to work and prove them right. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. 
love you. And I'm going to win that trophy. He's going to bring There's it. No oh. doubt. Bringing it to Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yay, Midwest. <laughs> that there is one to watch. Yeah. yeah. I think he knows how to cook. Let's see if he really has the passion. Exactly. All right, guys, that's four aprons down, one to go. The level of talent here is off the charts. Yeah. Wow. All right, look at that pork chop. Pound it out, baby. I'm Midwest, born and raised. I'm, I'm really excited to get a chance to rep the Midwest. So being from the Midwest, I, I think of fresh vegetables, fresh herbs, great meats, chicken, uh, beef, all of it. I'm a Cicerone, so that means I've studied beer and I'm a beer professional. So I'm a liquor sales rep by trade. Um, I have a great time. I have so much booze at home, and I love cooking with it. Look at that browning on that pork chop. It's beautiful. Do you smell that? It smells so good. This dish is going to earn me an apron, and I'm going to become the next Master Chef. Uh, if this dish doesn't earn me an apron, I'm not sure I understand what you're looking for on Master Chef. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Trevor. Trevor, good to see you. Hi, hi. Very nice to meet you. You seem in control. Tell us about the dish. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. So I am making a chicken roulade with an Armagnac Supreme. So what part what of the, the hell is that? Is that? Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just... So I'm a liquor sales rep. So I right. just take a, a sauce Supreme and then I just gotcha. add some Armagnac to it. It's gonna bring some of those really nice, like, plum caramely notes into that sauce. It sounds really That's ambitious. Good. Yeah. I'm a little shaky just because it's so intense. 15 minutes, home stretch, you got this. Hello, what's your name? I'm Kyle. Hi, Kyle, I'm Joe. Nice to this meet you. This is my associate, Aron Sanchez. How's it going, guys? What are you making? I'm making a double cup pork chop, and I'm doing a horse feather applesauce here. So the horse feather is the cocktail of Kansas City. Kansas City? You from Kansas City? I'm from KC. When we got married about 10 years ago, we had a whole hog, and we served horse feathers. Okay. So this plate is really a love letter to my wife. That's lovely. Good luck. Thanks, guys. OK. You're doing great, Dada. Thanks, dude. He is, isn't he? <laughs> you got it, baby. You got a minute 50. <laughs> that pork chop is perfection. Make it beautiful, baby. 59 seconds, babe. That's a $100 plate right there. It looks great. Yeah. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful job. You did it. You finished just in the last second. I did it, dude. I did it. You did it. Let's go. Welcome. I'm Kyle. I'm from Kansas City. Uh, I'm a certified Cicerone, uh, which is a beer professional, uh, and I sell beer for a living. I'm Trevor. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm the number one on-premise liquor sales rep for my state. I made a double cup pork chop with a horse feather applesauce. There's a sweet potato mash underneath, a balsamic reduction around the outside. Um, so I brought you the elevation of basically a casserole. So this is a chicken roulade accompanied by trumpet mushrooms and a Armagnac Supreme. Shall we Shall take we? a look? Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, visuals. Uh, listen, it looks fancy. A lot of work's gone into that. Was it poached and then fried or poached and sliced and served? So I poached and then sliced and then uh, seared. When you do these big cuts of meat, you have a lot of flesh to the ratio of rub or salt. So what I'm worried about, is there enough seasoning? Where's the rest of the chicken? So I just prepared one single serving. This is something that I would eat, right? No, I appreciate that. We got four big boys here. All right, so how? Uh, let's talk about the cook. Yeah. So what should it look like in the middle? Uh, I think it should be nice and pink. You should pink. see the fibers. <laughs> this is a little more white than pink, wouldn't you say? A little more white than pink, but I don't think it's overcooked, and I think it's going to be plenty juicy. I'm glad you think that. <laughs> And the base of the sauce, Trevor, is what? The base of the sauce is a chicken velouté, and then finished with a reduced heavy cream, and then an introduction of Armagnac. Uh, Trevor, you know, you've got some great technical skills. There's no two ways about that. 
The, the pork chop's properly seasoned, but it's overcooked for me. You know, it's a little bit mealy on the inside. I love this horse feather garnish that you have there. It's loaded with flavor. The apples are not overcooked, they're tart. The leeks have that butteriness to them. I love that. I love the mash as well. The big issue I've got inside is that chicken's actually quite dry. Yeah, I think that you would have benefited not searing it that second time. Doesn't need to be cooked twice, but the spinach is done beautifully. The sauce is flavored and balanced. There's a tough crowd behind you out there. Yeah. Right. And the stakes are high. Um... So when Teddy started kindergarten, I actually wrote, you can do hard things on a note card. And I told him that it had special powers. And if he ever got scared at school, uh, that it would keep him strong and safe. Oh. What do you think? And so then the night before I left, he gave me a card that he wrote <laughs> that said, you can do hard things. So awesome. The apron's awesome. Uh, this is awesomer. Yeah. Next time on MasterChef, please welcome Susan Fenneker. The regional auditions continue. Everybody knows West Side the best side. I like that, that's sass. As the best from the West battle it out for a white apron. I am here to fight for that apron. You're exactly what we're looking for. Absolute resounding yes. This very much speaks California. I think everyone in the West, we're just a little weirder. Wow. wow. Pretty obvious that it's a big no. I promise you. I can do this. I just don't think you're ready. One potato, two potato.